This video is the second in an A-level chemistry series about redox equations. We're going to recap oxidation states and then look at how you write half equations. The first video in this series explained how to derive the oxidation state of the different elements in a compound. So just pause the video and make sure that you're confident doing this before we go any further. In the first example, we've used the oxygen rule and said that oxygen is always going to be minus two unless it's in a peroxide or bonded to fluorine. Um, and then we've used the rule that overall that um, uncharged compound is going to have oxidation states which add up to zero um, to clarify that carbon is going to be plus four. The phosphorus in question two is an element, so it has an oxidation state of zero. The hydrogen in question three is going to be plus one and therefore the oxygen is going to be minus one. This is one of those examples of a peroxide where oxygen is not minus two. In aluminium chloride, um, the chlorine from group seven is going to be minus one, and therefore we can figure out that the aluminium is going to be plus three. And then finally, in the sulfate ion, oxygen again is minus two, and there are four oxygens, which makes minus eight in total. So to give an overall charge of minus two, that needs to be balanced out by a sulfur oxidation state of plus six. At GCC, you were introduced to the idea of half equations, particularly when studying electrolysis, but also hopefully for some chemical reactions. So a half equation is very similar to a full chemical symbol equation, but it just shows the transfer of electrons experienced by the atoms of one element. So it's almost like we've taken a symbol equation and we've cut it in half and we've shown where the electrons are moving inside it. Overall, it's really important that your atoms and your electrons are balancing so that your charge is balanced on both sides. So, for instance, if we take some iron ions with a three plus charge and try to turn them into iron atoms, which are overall neutral, the three positive charge on the iron ion needs to be balanced out by adding electrons. So we're obviously going to add three electrons. And this is a simple example of a half equation. To take something slightly more complicated, we could have chloride ions turning into chlorine molecules. Now, firstly, we can't have one chloride ion making one diatomic chlorine molecule, so we need two chloride ions. And then on the left hand side, we currently have um, two negative charges, but on the right hand side, we're neutral. So in order to make these be equivalent to each other, the right hand side needs more negative charge, and therefore we need to add two negative electrons on the right hand side. Before we make things any more complicated, here are six examples of the type of half equation you should have been comfortable completing at GCSE. Pause the video and make sure that you can finish them off. In each instance, you want to be adding electrons to the relevant side of the equation. At GCSE, we would have credited the idea of taking them away, but best practice is to just add them and add them on the left or the right as appropriate. So here for the first question, we've added three electrons to the right hand side to balance out the charge on that aluminium ion. Then we've added five electrons to the vanadium ion. We've balanced out our third equation by making it be two bromide ions. And then those two single negative charges are counteracted by the two electrons on the right hand side. In question number four, we've balanced the number of fluoride ions and we've balanced out the charge by adding two electrons to the left. In question number five, we've added a single electron to reduce this iron three plus iron to an iron two plus iron. And in question number six, our chromium three plus iron has been oxidized to hexavalent chromium by adding three electrons on the right hand side. So those examples of half equations were quite straightforward because all you really need to do is to look at the charges and then add the right number of electrons to make them balance out. Maybe with a little bit of balancing if you're going back and forth between ions and molecules. But at A-level, we're going to start to meet more complicated scenarios like this one. So I've now got a bromate ion changing into a bromine molecule. And you can look at that and straight away you're going to be saying, well, I need to have two bromate ions on the left hand side. and I'm going to need to do something with electrons to make the charges balance. But you've also got some oxygen to worry about. So we're now going to have a slightly more complicated multi-stage process, but it's always going to be the same steps in the same order, and it's going to apply to any half equation. So these are the steps. Firstly, we need to calculate the oxidation states of everything that they've given us. And we're going to be interested in the one thing that is having its oxidation state changed. Then we're going to balance that element. So here, it's obviously going to be the bromine that we're interested in. We're not going to worry about the oxygen for now. We obviously can't balance it because we haven't even got any on the right hand side. So we're just going to make sure that we've balanced the number of bromines on the left and the right. Then we're going to add electrons wherever they're needed to counteract the change in oxidation state. And then this is where we start to sort out the oxygen. So for every oxygen gained, we're going to need to add a water molecule on the opposite side. So here to start with, I've got three oxygens, which would suggest that on the right hand side, I would need three water molecules. 
actually because I'm going to already balance the bromate it's going to end up being six but we'll get to that in a second and then well you can see already that if I'm adding water I'm not just adding oxygen I'm adding hydrogen so I'm then going to need to add hydrogen ions on the other side to make this all balance out so let's now look at this in practice we start off with our bromine on the right hand side because it's easy it's an element so you know that it's zero then we look at the oxygen on the left we know that it's going to be minus two I've got three oxygens, each with an oxidation state of minus two. That makes minus six. But my overall ion charge is a single negative. So that means my bromine here must be plus five. So the thing that's changing is the bromine. It's changing from plus five to zero. It's being reduced because that oxidation state is going down. It's reducing. So now that I know that the bromine has been reduced from plus five to zero, I need to balance it. So currently I have one bromine on the left hand side and two bromines on the right hand side. So I need to add a coefficient of two in front of my bromate ion in order to make that balance. And now my next step is to sort out the number of electrons. So my bromine is changing from an oxidation state of plus five to zero. And crucially, I've got two bromine atoms. So in order to make that overall plus 10 balance out with the zero on the right hand side, I'm going to need to add 10 electrons. Now, my next step is to sort out the oxygen. So I've got three oxygens here per bromate ion, but I've got two bromate ions, so six oxygens in total. So I do this by adding six waters to my right hand side. This is a reaction that's going to happen in aqueous solution and six waters are going to be used up in this. But I've now added in 12 hydrogens that weren't there before. So I'm going to add these on the left hand side to make this continue to balance. Now I can check whether this overall equation is right by looking at the charges. So my right hand side here has no overall charge. I've just got the bromine molecules and the water molecule and they're both neutral uncharged. On the left hand side, I've got 12 positive hydrogens. I've got 10 negative electrons. And then I've also got two single negative bromate ions. So if I add all that up, both sides come to zero, both sides are the same as one another, and that suggests that I've probably done this right. These are a bit tricky and they do take a little while to get your head around, so now is the time to pause the video and make sure that you can do each of these. If you're struggling, it might be worth going back to those five rules and making sure that you have them happily in your head and that you're doing them in the right order, and then we'll come back and check you can do them. In the first question, nitrogen is oxidised from plus four to plus five, while oxygen keeps an oxidation state of minus two. I don't need to do any balancing because I've got one nitrogen atom on both sides of the equation. What I do need to do is add an electron to the right hand side to counteract the change from plus four to plus five. Then I can look at the oxygen. The right hand side of the equation has one extra oxygen, so the left hand side is going to need one extra water molecule. And then to counteract that, the right hand side is going to need two hydrogen ions. In question two, chlorine is reduced from plus five to zero. So firstly, we need to balance the chlorine. We're going to need two chlorate ions to make this work. And next, we need to sort out the electrons. To get from plus five to zero it requires five electrons, and we're doing it twice. So we're going to need 10 electrons on the left-hand side. Then we worry about the oxygen. We've now, because we've got two chlorate ions, we've got six oxygens on the left hand side so we're going to need six water molecules on the right hand side and those are going to need to be counteracted by 12 hydrogen ions on the left hand side. In the third example we've just got mercury being oxidized from plus one to plus two so we don't need to worry about any um, any oxygen any water any hydrogen ions but because it's being oxidized from plus one to plus two the right hand side needs two electrons to make that balance out. In question four, vanadium is oxidised from plus four to plus five. We don't need to balance the vanadium because it's already balanced, but we are going to need to add one electron in the right hand side to make that charge work out. And then looking at the number of oxygens, there's one more oxygen on the right hand side. So that means we're going to need one more water molecule on the left hand side and two hydrogen ions on the right hand side to make that work out. Finally, sulphur is oxidised from having an oxidation state of zero in its elemental form to one of plus six in a sulphate ion. We're going to need to balance the sulphur and because it's S8 when it's an element, that's going to involve having eight sulphate ions. So then we're going to need to sort out some electrons. Um, and so for a, an oxidation state change of six for eight sulphate ions, that's going to be a total of 48 electrons that you need to add onto the right hand side. 
And then because we've got eight sulfate ions, we've got 32 extra oxygen atoms. So you're going to need 32 water molecules on the left hand side. And that needs to be balanced out by 64 hydrogen ions on the right hand side. So overall, that's a fairly huge and scary looking half equation, but we can double check to see if it's probably right by making sure do the charges all add up. So we've got eight lots of two negatives, so that's 16 negative so far, and then 48 electrons, so that's 64 negative, balanced out by our 64 positive hydrogen ions, which together adds up to neutral, which is what we've got on the left hand side here. Thanks for watching. Next, we'll be moving on to putting these half equations together to make full simple equations.